Well, we've had Nurse Nikki give us both the COVID jab, mate. I feel great. You I do too. I feel great. Too. Fine. Absolutely fine. Um, but we've now got Dr Shannon uh, Melody with us and Cathy Morgan-Wicks, who is the Secretary for the Department of Health, to answer some questions. Good morning. Good morning and well done, boys. Oh, thank you. <laughs> hey, how's the COVID rollout going? Are you happy with it so far? Extremely happy with Tasmanians that are turning out to vaccinate. So we've hit over 17% of Tasmanians that have now received a dose of the COVID vaccine, and which is really positive to see, but we need to see more coming out. Mm. Absolutely. Now, some commonly asked questions, and I'll come over here. I'm, I'm in my 35th year of life. <laughs> what, what, what about women that are either pregnant now early pregnancy or people that are even thinking of um, wanting to fall pregnant? What's what's the go there? Because it scares me. It's a really good question and it is a commonly asked one. So at the moment, just based on an abundance of caution, COVID vaccines are not routinely recommended in pregnancy or mm. people in it, that, and that includes any stage throughout the pregnancy. And the reason is, is that in the clinical trials, in the, in the early sort of... Um, months and looking at the data, pregnant women weren't intentionally included. So this is not a a great deal of data. There's no theoretical concern that these vaccines would be cause for harm. Yeah. However, women may want to consider their individual risk. So if they're a frontline healthcare worker, if they work in border and quarantine, they may want to consider COVID vaccination from that perspective. Now, what about side effects? What what should Mick and I be looking out for now? Just be on the safe side. Yeah, so like any common... Uh, <laughs> Stop shaking me. Oh, my God. <laughs> There's always Sorry. a joker in the crowd. Sorry. No, seriously, what are the side effects that I have to look out for when you all leave me? So it's much like any vaccine. So people might experience some redness at the site of the vaccination. Mm-hmm. They may, may feel a little bit sore at that site. They might feel a little bit off in terms of muscle aches, a mild headache. Um, and just a little bit under the weather, but that mm. all tends to occur within the first 24 to 48 hours and resolves without any great intervention. And that's just telling us that your immune system is actually responding mm. to yeah. the vaccine. So no real difference to getting the flu vaccine at all? Very similar profile of side effects. Yeah, yeah. good stuff. Mm. Now, you're going to come back and do us in another 12 weeks. What are you? What's the reason for 50 and over at the moment? Is it We're more at risk? It's a number of considerations and it's out of the ATAGI advice. So that's the technical group that advised the government on immunisation. And the reason really is around the risk benefit assessment. So from a benefit pers- perspective, people over 50 are at a much greater risk of severe outcome if they were to be infected okay. with COVID. Mm. So your likelihood of having to be hospitalised yep. or go to ICU if you got COVID is much greater with each year that you age. And in terms of the risk, we know that there's this really rare but serious side effect that's been described in association with AstraZeneca, and that's that rare clotting syndrome that's Mm. been described in the media. Um, And so it's really a risk-benefit assessment, but our overwhelming advice is that for those over 50, vaccination is still very much the best way to protect yourself against Mm. COVID. One thing I'd like to ask, does it drive you insane when you hear of the one in a million case that gets a blood clot when the other... You know, the vast majority of people have no uh, reaction whatsoever to the shot, and yet the media does seem to focus on the one little mishap. You know, the one mishap. It must be a bit frustrating when you're trying to get it out there. I suppose it points to the heightened sense of um, anxiety in the public around these mm. new vaccines. Mm. And But I think it also points to the strength and rigour of our surveillance mm. systems that they've actually been able to pick up this very rare event in yep. a pretty timely fashion. And we first learnt about it out of Europe because they're ahead in their vaccination rollout in terms of pure numbers. So I can understand people's concerns, but it also is a sign of just how much of a microscope is on these vaccines. Mm. Now, it's 50 years and over at the moment, but when do you think the age limit will drop? And will it drop just to then anyone will be able to get it or will you then go another age gap? So we're already vaccinating (coughs) under 50s that have an underlying medical condition. So they're getting vaccinated with the Pfizer vaccine and we've got clinics open in the south at um, our Royal Hobart Hospital and also a Wellington clinic for Pfizer. So people can make bookings uh, and they can also um, speak to their GP if they've 
got any concerns about that underlying medical condition. Yeah. Um, but it's really great to see the AstraZeneca opened up for the over 50s. Um, we first ho- uh, focused on the over 70s and we're really close to 40% of our 70 year olds and over in Tasmania being vaccinated, which Fantastic. is great. But mm. let's see that push up to you know, yes. the 80 and, and 90%. And for all like you old toughies out there, like my mum and dad that say nothing ever goes wrong, go and have it done, mum and dad. <laughs> <laughs> it needs to be done. Yeah. That's exactly what my 91-year-old dad said. Oh, and, yeah. and he was there in a flash, though, because he has been, like me, um, watching yep. COVID ravage the world. Yes. Yeah. The India situation at the moment, you just think this is your duty. Go and get go and get vaccinated and protect your family and, yep. and the community. And That's protect right. them. Like, I've got elderly grandparents. One's 92, one's just about to turn 90. And they were straight in the door. They were on the doorstep of the doctor saying, yeah. why aren't you giving it to me? Yeah. So and for that reason as well, they just want to be protective of their family. And they remember, you know, polio. Yes, that's they it. remember exactly. that's you it. Know, what happened when vaccines came in and actually really prevented the serious consequences of COVID-19, mm. which far outweigh um, in terms of the risks if you actually contract it. And there's yep. a full list of vaccination centres available at the, the website. Oh, absolutely. And we're pleased to say that we've just added some further weeks to our Hewinville Clinic because that booked out super fast. Fantastic. So we've added some extra time. We are a very clever lot <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> that's Mick going up and down the streets every day with a core flute going, Absolutely. get vaccinated. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Thank you. All and right. don't forget to book online. So at coronavirus.tas.gov.au or our public health hotline. Beautiful job. All Thank right. you. Thank you.